If you've wondered what a coaster running on one rail is like, you're not going to want to miss this one. Here's my review of Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flights Magic Mountain. But first, welcome to 808 Coaster Life. If you're new to this channel and you love roller coasters and other theme park related stuff, please consider subscribing. This coaster opened in 2022 as Six Flags Magic Mountain's 20th roller coaster, making Magic Mountain have the most roller coasters in one park in the world. That record might soon be beaten by the much newer Polish park Energylandia, which is funded by their government, so I'ma call that cheating. Wonder Woman is the fifth Rocky Mountain construction single rail coaster, also known as the Raptor Track. Instead of making a basic steel coaster, RMC used a single rail design, which allows for a tighter turning radius and cheaper steel costs. The track design is also more durable than traditional steel coasters and is smoother since one less rail means less chances for small errors in track profiling. This model has been announced and tested since 2015 and the first one opened three years later with the same theme but a different subtitle I guess. Wonder Woman Flight of Courage was not only my first RMC Raptor but also my first RMC in general. It exceeded my expectations and ended up being one of my favorite rides at Magic Mountain due to its rewritability and dynamic layout. This ride has a maximum height of 131 feet, making it the tallest single rail coaster in the world by one foot. Take that, Jersey Devil. It drops at 87 degrees, reaches a max speed of 58 miles per hour, and goes through 3,300 feet of track, making it the longest single rail coaster in the world. Besides having the color scheme of McDougal's french fries, this coaster is presented very well. Now I'm hungry. The ride is in a compact footprint made by removing a couple rides, including apparently one of the worst coasters in the world. It's right up to the paths, making it one of my favorite coasters at the Park 2 video. I could have just went on non-busy days, but I'd never seen this ride have over a 30 minute wait when I was there, despite having a lower capacity of only 12 riders per train. It's probably because the ride is located at the back of the park and always runs at least two trains. You enter your queue where you'll notice that Six Flags seemingly spend 80% of the theming budget on the indoor cattle pen, 20% on the entrance, and 0% anywhere else. The indoor part does have decent theming though. You then enter probably the most chaotic locker setup I've experienced. Since the lockers aren't double-sided, people entering and exiting the ride are all in the same area. An employee has to watch the area to make sure no one cuts back in line. The big lockers costed around a dollar or two, but the smaller cubbies are free. For reference, this bag, which was about a third full, was able to fit in the small cubbies. And for the stuff in your pockets, there are also pouches in front of each seat. You climb up to the very plain station and notice two things. First of all, this ride has a moving loading station. So even when people are entering and exiting the train, it never stops moving. This has pros and cons. Even though the loading might be a little more stressful, this speeds up operations, which is good since this is a fairly new attraction with a lower capacity, which usually is a recipe for long lines. The station is also quite long, so you shouldn't have to worry too much. However, it'll be harder to choose your own row. Some employees might let you wait for your row, but others might not be so lenient. The other thing you'll notice is the ride's inline seating. Unlike most roller coasters, there will be no one sitting next to you on this ride, hence the subtitle Flight of Courage. Besides being great for single riders, since they don't have to sit next to a stranger, your arms have more freedom. You can even T-pose if you want. I will warn because of the inline seating and the moving loading station, your party will more likely get put on different trains. That happened to me once. If possible, definitely go for the back row. Some moments on this ride are better in the front, but it's overall better in the back. The trains feature seatbelt-like vest restraints, which are actually more comfortable and roomy than I expected. That being said, I can't speak for people taller than 5'9", and apparently the prototype Raptors have less accommodating restraints. The leg position is a little awkward. There's a hump in the middle of the floor, so you kind of have to straddle the seat. This is probably because the train has a lower center of gravity than most roller coasters, which helps with pacing. I'll preface this by saying, if you've ridden Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flies Great Adventure, this is a near clone of that ride. Also, unless you go on a not so good day, this ride will feel faster than this early POV by the park. Your ride experience begins by turning right and going up the lift. It's probably around 45 degrees because it felt pretty steep on ride. After not too much waiting, you enter the ride's near vertical drop. In the back, this drop has some amazing ejector airtime, which didn't feel hampered by the restraints. I'd say Twisted Colossus's drop is slightly better, but they're close. You pull lots of Gs before rising into the first of three inversions, a Raven dive. The front row gets floater airtime entering the inversion while the back gets a lot of whip. Think of this as a superior dive loop. You then go into an awesome sustained ejector airtime hill, probably one of the best airtime moments in this park. You then go into a zero-g stall. Now this was my first ever zero-g stall, which was a fun and interesting experience. When they say zero-g's, 
they do mean zero Gs, as this ride felt like it was going too slow for any full throttle like hang time, but it was going too fast for any positive Gs. This felt the longest out of the three zero G stalls at this park. You bend to the left and whip to the right into a very forceful turnaround. The turning radius is very small thanks to the Raptor technology. The train then drops, giving nice floater airtime in the front and strong ejector airtime in the back. You then go through the ride's final inversion, a zero G roll. It has a mild amount of whip making it very fun. The front row gets a pop of airtime as the train rises up into a mid-course brake run. Fear not, I never felt the brakes slowing down the train at all. The back gets a nice pop of ejector airtime as the train drops into a tight and forceful overbanked turn. You then go through two back-to-back off-axis hills. While these had great flow ejector airtime, I'd say the camelback and the second drop deliver stronger airtime. You then go through an ejector bunny hop before doing a 90 degree banked hill. This still gives you weightlessness but definitely focuses more on laterals, making it a nice change of pace from the three hills you've just experienced. Finally, the goes through an overbanked turn over the pathway. This is more fun when you look down at the entrance plaza. You hit the brakes ending your ride on Wonder Woman Flight of Courage. As you can tell, the layout is very dynamic. The only dead spot the ride really has is the mid-course brake run, and even that doesn't last very long. On the end trip, the ride felt like it was losing its steam a little bit, but besides that, pacing on this ride was awesome. The ride was quite intense in some sections, especially the drop, camelback, and the whole turnaround thing. It also had a nice variety of forces, great mix of flow ejector and ejector airtime, and some decent lateral moments too. If I were to pick a favorite element, even though it's a hard choice, I'd probably choose the first drop since it's very good in the back row. I also really like the ride duration. It didn't feel short, but it also didn't feel dragged out for too long. Both RMCs at this park are very smooth rides, but I will say I found Twisted Colossus to be slightly smoother. I think what I enjoyed most about this ride was its re-ride ability. Even though I rode this ride a total of three times, I would definitely not be opposed to ride it more since the ride has a healthy amount of intensity and the duration felt right. If you didn't get the row you wanted, that's also another reason to ride again. The inline seating also helps with its re-ride ability, because even though you have vest restraints, you kind of feel more free in a way, and it's definitely different from most coasters you'll probably ride. Overall, the pros are the inline seating, re-ride ability, operations, and layout. The cons are the theming and locker setup. Wonder Woman Flight of Courage gets a very good 4.8 out of 5 stars. I still think Twisted Colossus is the better RMC in the park, but it's not by much. That being said, I don't think Twisted Colossus makes this ride irrelevant. Yeah, they're both made by the same manufacturer, but their layouts are pretty different. Twisted Colossus focuses more on those sudden drops and small bunny hops, while Wonder Woman focuses more on packing element after element. If this is considered one of the milder RMC Raptors, I'm looking forward to riding one of the prototype Raptors. Now that RMC can make higher capacity Raptors with more comfortable restraints, I love to see more of these get built. They provide a pretty unique experience that would be a good fit for a lot of parks. If you haven't ridden a single rail coaster before, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised by this ride. Well, now that I've ridden this coaster, if you want to find out how much I guessed right in my analysis of a similar coaster before it even opened, check out the card up there. Let me know down in the comments if you've ridden a single rail coaster. Bonus points if it's not made by RMC. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know by leaving a like on this video and maybe even subscribe. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.